The major new features that were announced last week for iOS 13 are exciting, but what about some of the hundred or so new changes and features that weren't quite talked about at WWDC? In this video, we're gonna go over 20 new iOS 13 features that you should know. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. In iOS 13, there's an improved messages search menu. In fact, in the messages app, when you search, you'll see a brand new interface with suggested contacts and links that you've been sent. Searches bring up the most recent results with an option to see more by tapping see all. You can now quickly change Wi-Fi networks right from your control center, but it is slightly annoying to get to. Long press in the middle of the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth widget to bring up the extended options and then force touch on the Wi-Fi icon to see a list of available networks. From here, you can now connect to any network that's in your area, or you can jump right into the Wi-Fi settings without having to back out of control center and open up the settings app, all from within control center. Just like we did with Wi-Fi, you can now do the same thing, but with Bluetooth devices from Control Center. Long press the middle of the Wi-Fi Bluetooth widget and then force touch the Bluetooth icon to see your list of Bluetooth devices or to jump right into more Bluetooth settings in the settings menu. If you're getting a ton of unwanted calls or you just don't want your phone to ring anymore when a number that's not in your contacts calls you, you can actually silence unknown callers by going into the phone section of the settings app and then select the toggle silence unknown callers, which will now block all unknown callers cutting down on spam calls that you're receiving. In the settings menu under cellular, there's an option to enable low data mode, which says it helps apps on your iPhone reduce their network data use. There's also a low data mode option that can be enabled for specific Wi-Fi networks. In the Safari section of the settings app, there's a new option to automatically close all of the tabs that you have open in Safari. You can set it to a day, a week, a month, or leave it on manual, which is how it currently works. To update applications in iOS 13, you need to open up the app store, tap on your profile picture in the top right corner, and choose apps from the pending updates section. There was an updates tab in iOS 12, but it's been removed in favor of an Apple Arcade tab for iOS 13. If you decide that you don't want to update that app because you actually want to delete the app, you can do so right from the update screen by swiping to the left on the specific application that you wish to delete. The new volume HUD is a lot better in iOS 13 than in iOS 12 or previous years, but if you really need to reduce volume quickly, you can even actually control the volume HUD as a slider by simply pressing and sliding your finger up and down on the screen iOS 13 brings a new share sheet that looks and functions way better in my opinion than previous years. My favorite thing is the suggestion of whom or how to share, which is based on some of the more frequent methods or contacts like airdropping to my iMac or share links or images with my wife in messages. Apple announced PS4 and Xbox One S controller support for Apple TV, but these controllers will also be supported on iPhone and iPad. Simply activate Bluetooth pairing on your controller and then head into the Bluetooth settings menu of your iOS device to pair that with your iPad or your iPhone. These next few tips work on all iOS devices and are not iPad specific, but there are new copy and paste gestures that certainly work better on larger screens. To copy text, perform a pinch in with three fingers, or to paste that text, you can perform a pinch out with three fingers as well. If you made a mistake by any means and wish to undo, you can simply swipe to the left with three fingers or swipe to the right with three fingers to redo. No more needing to violently shake your devices, but that feature is still present if shaking is your thing. Navigating with the cursor is also easier than ever these days. Simply tap and drag the cursor anywhere on the screen. No more worrying about accidental highlighting or bringing up any unwanted menus. If you swipe on a message in the mail app and then choose more, there's a new option to mute a thread so that you won't get notifications when a new email in that thread is received. Now we did mention this feature in the previous video, but it's still pretty awesome and worth another mention. Swipe to type is now officially available in the stock iOS keyboard. All you have to do is slide your fingers throughout the keyboard and let the predictive text do the rest of the work for faster and more efficient typing. You can now take full page screenshots inside of Safari, which is fantastic. All you need to do is take a screenshot and then click on the full page option, which exports the entire web page as a PDF that you can save or share. Requesting the desktop version of a website is also easier than ever inside of iOS 13. Simply tap on the text icon in the top left corner and then select request desktop version. But if you want that specific website to always default to this desktop version, select website settings and toggle on request desktop site option. 
Some songs inside of Apple Music now have a new feature called Time Synced Lyrics, where instead of just displaying the lyrics for that song, they're now presented synced to the music so that the lyrics will scroll along as the song progresses. Lyrics can be accessed by tapping the new lyrics icon at the bottom of any song interface. Finally, in the Books app, there's a new Reading Goals feature that keeps track of how long you've read each day. The app also encourages you to read every day and you can keep track of your stats and finish more books. If you're using iOS 13 and your goal was to read more, I highly recommend checking out this feature inside of the Books app.